Come on, let's give God a shout this morning. Are we having church or not? Man, I am super excited uh, to be able to stand in front of you guys and, and bring you the word. I just, uh, I want to honor uh, our pastors, uh, Pastor Walt and Pastor Joanne. Uh, this means a lot to me that um, I get to be up here. And, it, and it's not the stage. Um, it, it's you guys. They, they're trusting me to be able to bring a word to you guys. And, uh, man, that means a lot to me. And so uh, I'm super thankful for that. And uh, our campus pastor, Pastor David, I'm so thankful for him and Pastor Lane uh, for allowing me to jump in this series. Uh, um, and so uh, that means a lot as well, this series of the heart of the church, the heart of God. Amen. So I know Pastor uh, David brought uh, the word uh, live the spirit-filled life last week. And... Uh, and so we're going over the values of the church. And today I want to talk about live in community. And so live in community, uh, I feel like it's, it's one of the things that I enjoy the most. I enjoy people. Don't get me wrong. I, there's times where I'm just, I want to be by myself. Uh, and, and sometimes I don't know that I need to be with community. But uh, when I do jump in the community, it, it's so rewarding into my life. And so why is community so important? God lived in community. Scripture says when he made man, he says, let's create man in our image, our image. He had a community of his own, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so when he created man... You know, he created the earth, he created the heavens, and he said, that is good. Created the animals, that is good. But then when he created man, uh, something's missing. So he created a companion, a community for man. He created woman so that we can partner up together in life. And so even the little things that, may, that we may not see today, our wives, the, the people around us are a blessing. And even Jesus, when he got baptized and he got, you know, he, he went out into the, uh, the wilderness and got tested by the enemy, he was alone. But then as soon as he was done, one of the first things he did was what? He built his community. So this morning, I want to jump in to community. And uh, scholars say, you know, when woman was created, that was the first time that there was no silence on earth. So we thank God for women. Amen. Hey, let's just jump into prayer right quick. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for this community that we call the Life Church, Father God. Father God, open up our hearts, open up our minds to receive the things that we need to receive today, Father. Dig deep in our hearts, Father God. Dig deep in our minds and show us the things, Father God, that we need to change through your grace moving forward, Lord. In Jesus' name, and God's people say, amen. Man, that worship team, we thank them, amen. That was weak. Man, are we awake today? <clears throat> Man, we're going to have some fun today. Is that cool? I want you to look at your neighbor and say, this message is not for you. This is for me. Look at your other neighbor and say, this message is not for you. It's for me. When we go to church, we're not thinking about the other person, the person next to us, the person behind us. Oh, man, this is a great message for them. No, this message is for you. <laughs> so as long as you're coming to church to receive God's word and we're growing, we're taking those steps like Pastor Mauricio says, we're taking those baby steps. Take every little thing as baby steps, as growth. Uh, man, Cowboys play today. I can't believe we, dog, can you stand up? Man, we're 
we're just letting anybody in church now. Amen. <laughs> That's fine. Man, so if, if you know me, any, you know that uh, I, I love to have fun. Uh, one, one of the things that I, I enjoy the most is, is getting together with families and hosting board games. I love board games. And, and, I, I, and I wish I can tell you that it's just the community part that I really enjoy. But I love whooping people. I love literally beating people and seeing their face and, and then watching them leave mad and then call me later, I'm sorry that I left mad. I'm like, oh, no, brothers, it's, it's fine. It's great. But I, I, one thing that I really don't like is, is when they want to partner up with wives. Okay, wives or couples versus couples. And... I wish I can say it was a blessing, but I, I'm married to Blanca, and she hates games. And so the whole time she's talking and talking, I'm like, babe, it's your turn. Babe, it's your turn. Do this, babe. Don't do that. And so I don't get to pick who I want. I'm kind of stuck with somebody that does not like games. But, see, community is a lot like that. You must choose the people around. You have to choose the right people, the people that are going to be for you, the people that are going to fight for you. I have uh, four points today, so if you have notes or you pull up your phone, I really, really want you to take these notes today uh, just as a reminder daily uh, as we're getting and going through life. So point number one, choose community wisely. Choose your community wisely. God uses divine relationships. He will bring people in your life that will help you get through life. God uses people to unlock your potential. Uh, I'm not going to get into the story, but if you uh, read the, the, the story on Elisha and Elijah, uh, man, that's a beautiful testimony of just relationship, fellowship, community, one being there for the other. Um, and, and Elijah followed the footsteps of Elijah. I know we always get those two mixed up, but it's, it, it's a great story. So if you have time, read it. That. Uh, so you want a community that, to help encourage you. And they're always going to realign you to the heart of God and they're going to realign you to the mind and the, and the word of God, right? And so we want these people in our lives. We want this, this help. They will always point you to Jesus. And one of my favorite stories in the, in, in the Bible is in Luke 5, 17, 20. And it's about these, th- this group of men that are helping their friend. They're helping their friend get to Jesus because he's paralyzed. And so he can't go on his own. And so let's just jump right in. It says, one day Jesus was teaching and Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there. They had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal the sick. Simon came carrying a paralyzed man on a mat And tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. When they found, when they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him on his mat through tiles into the middle of the crowd. I don't know about you, but I need some friends like that. Tear a roof down. To bring you to Jesus? Mm, I need some friends like that. Uh, I was reminded the other day, uh, talking to a friend, uh, about my younger years at Lakeview on the football team. And um, we had just got from Lincoln undefeated. So we're like, man, this Lakeview team is going to be really good Uh, like they are right now. 
Why are y'all laughing? I said they're good people, not a good team. But uh, uh, I remember it was a second game in, and we we're we we're excited. We we're just excited for this team. And uh, I was the running back. I, I, I know I don't look like a running back now. This is Blanca's fault. She makes really good food. She always buys tortillas. But, uh, yeah, I was, the, I was the running back. In this particular game, we were facing some big dudes, big linebackers. And Coach had told me, he's like, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put you at fullback today. I want you just to hit those linebackers. And since they're so big, I want you to put your shoulder right into their, to their uh, ribs and then put the crown of your helmet right to the ribs. Get them out of the game. I said, I can do that. That sounds like fun. But uh, play after play, linebackers would come out because, man, we we're really putting some hurt to them. And uh, I remember this one linebacker went out. He went out for a couple of game uh, plays. And then he came back in. And, man, this dude was so fired up. I couldn't see him for, for a play. And I was like, where is he? And uh, I remember the whistle blew, and all of a sudden, I turned around, and I heard some footsteps, like, running towards me. I was like, what the heck? And I turned around, and this dude hits me in the legs, tackles me down, punches me once in the helmet. Ouch, right? Not for me. Ouch for him. But I was so mad, and I pushed this dude off of me, and then his leg was still right here on my chest, and I get this leg, and I'm like, move your stupid leg. Come to find out it was my own leg. <laughs> this dude broke my leg. My own leg was on my chest. Get off of me. Oh. <laughs> man, talk about, I was devastated, man. I, 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 I loved football. And at that time, football was, was everything to me. It was, it was my life. I had uh, a dream to, to play college football. And uh, that moment, it was, it was all gone. It was all gone, and it was just like, man, it's over. And uh, I remember my coach bringing me, you know, helping me get to the, uh, to the ambulance. And uh, he was praying. He started praying. I was like, dude, just get me inside the ambulance. I don't want to hear your prayer. But... He got me in the ambulance, but he, he prayed for me. And he said, God, help him to see. And I still remember the prayer. God, help him to see that his identity is not in football. It's in you. And then I got, yeah, absolutely. I got into the ambulance. They, they took me. Uh, and then that night I saw coach again. And he's like, you know, let, hey, let me pray for you. God, help him to see that his identity is in you not in football. Then he came the next day. God, help him to see that his identity is in you, not in football. And he came day after day after day, and he just reminded me that I am enough without football. And he ended up telling me a story that basically the same thing happened to him where he had to quit football because of a leg injury. Later, I would go on and, and uh, do everything I did to get back on the field, only just to break it in the same place. Uh, and so, yeah, I was done for sure. But coach was there, and he reminded me. He reminded me. And see, these guys here in Luke, they went up to the roof and lowered him on his mat, through the tiles, into the middle of the crowd. And they took him right in front of a witch doctor. Right in front of the best doctor in Dallas, Texas. No. He dropped him right in front of Jesus. My friends, this is where we need to build our community. Do you have a group of people that is always going to remind you no matter what you're going through, man, you need to go to Jesus. You need to go to God's word. You need to go to God. Are we surrounded by that type of community? And are we ready for it? 
we have to be ready to receive that. And so my second point today, if you're writing this down, are you ready for divine relationships? Are you ready for divine relationships? Because I promise you, with these divine relationships, these people are are going to come with you with the love of God, but they're going to come and correct you. Are you ready to receive correction? Mm, that's a tough one. Nobody wants to be corrected. But with these relationships, you got to hear the heart of God. Are they directing you to the Bible? Are they directing you to spend time with God? Are they directing you in this area of correction? Sometimes you'll get called out. Sometimes you'll get called out and say, hey, man, you know, mm, it's all the way you're talking to your wife earlier, man. Is everything okay? Or girl, I saw how you were talking to your husband. You good? It's usually that one, not the other one. But there's correction in love. These divine relationships that come in. Are you ready to receive them, though? Half of the time, I, I'll be honest, growing up, I did not. I did not. Oh, man, they're so judgmental. Out of my life. I was not ready to receive that. And so even in our small groups and things like that, this church must grow larger and smaller at the same time. It must grow larger and smaller at the same time. Bring people to church. But at the same time, bring them to groups. Some of y'all may be sitting there and saying, uh, uh, I, I went to, uh, you know, I, I tried it. I tried groups. No, you went. I mean, you didn't put your heart in it. I promise you there's a community in these groups that is willing to fight for you, pray for you. One thing that I really enjoy, and I, and I can pick on dog like this because, man, there's such a, 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 a connection here with the men's group. And I promise you there's something happening here with the men's that is just going to propel this church and this community. I, I can't wait to see it. And a lot of you men that are here, Steve, man, y'all are building something. And I'm just proud. I'm, I'm proud to see it and witness it. I, uh, you know, just because we have a, a title of pastor, uh, we're in ministry. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that we don't go through stuff and allow stuff to happen in our minds. And, and so... There, there's 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 got to be correction there, even for us, for humans. And uh, I'd say even a couple of weeks back, I was in my funk, and um, my wife, you know, she 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 was there, and, and not that I was lashing out at her, but she knew, okay, he's not talking to me right, he's not talking to the kids. There's a little bit of of uh, it looks like there's a little bit of anger or something bugging him. And so my wife, she pulled me to the side, and she's like, you either go take a nap or you need to fix your attitude right now. And it was not out of, like, anger or she, she was calling me higher. She knows who I am. And so even correction by your wife, mm, man, it's good. They're there. They're God-given. And sometimes I have to correct her. She doesn't listen, but <laughs> then she'll go to somebody in her community and I, she'll hear the same thing I just said. And she's like, oh, my God. Wow. That's wonderful. And I'm like, babe, I told you the exact same thing. But it, it's you. It's you. <laughs> Proverbs 19.20 says, Listen to advice and accept correction. And in the end, you will be wise. Mm. Take that in. 
See, when God sends you the people in your community, will you spiritually be ready to handle that? I'm running out of time. Will you spiritually be ready for that? Man, God help us. We need it. We need correction. We need those baby steps. We need it. Just imagine some of the things that we wouldn't have to deal with um, in life just because we would know it. The word would be in us. You know, one thing that, uh, that Pastor David says, um, and, and it's, it's, it's so true, people can be sincere, but sincerely wrong. They can have the heart for you. They can care about you so much. But the advice, is it rooted in God's word? Are they giving you the advice that you need to hear versus what you want to hear? I remember growing up and uh, we had just gotten married and uh, we would go through stuff. You know, we've been married 18 years. And uh, I think the first two years were just like, man, I don't know if I can do this anymore. So I talked to my friends and they're like, man, dude, you need to leave her, man. One, they heard it one-sided. Two, they don't know what I was doing because I'm not going to tell them that. Godly advice would tell you, what does God say about your situation? Get your butt back over there and pray together. That's what God would want us to do. But if we're getting that advice, man, you need to leave him. You need to leave her. We're not taking the right advice. I know every situation is different, but what does God say about your situation? And that's what we need to be reminded about daily of our situations and our problems. All right, I'm going to just jump right through this real quick. Point three, be the community. You got to be the community. What does that mean? It's like a marriage. It's not about, and this is what I told, is Oz here, Oz and Marianne? No, they just got married yesterday. And uh, one of the things that I got to tell him uh, before he walked the aisle was always to remember, it's not about what you can get out of the marriage, it's what you can put in. And that's what it's like in your community. It's not always about what you can get out of it, leaders. Y'all are all leaders. It's what you can put in that community. See, one of the things that we hear in marriages is, is it's, it's 50-50. You got to meet me halfway. Ah, wrong. It's 100-100. You got to put your all in it. And so in your communities, as leaders, there's going to be times where you need to receive. But there's going to be times where your community is going to need you. Step into that leadership that you are called to be. What can you provide in your community? Not just what you can get out. See, to be all of this, you have to get this from the source. To be a leader, you have to go to the source. Um, Again, when I was younger, I was uh, 12 years old. I was innocent back then, you know. I think a little after that is when all hell broke loose. But I remember uh, my friend's mom finally letting me, allowing me to to stay the night at their house. And my mom allowed me to stay the night at their house. And uh, they had a dog. This dog was sick. Um, I think it was the food that was making him sick. So the the vet put him uh, on some different... Uh, types of foods, but he wasn't eating it. Apparently, he was just eating it at night. And um, so uh, my friend had a little uh, brother. I think he was like five years old. And um, his name was Buddy. Hey, Buddy. 
And um, it, they, they were a really, really good family. And uh, I was actually there when they took him to the vet, took the dog to the vet. And uh, the mom said, okay, we're going we're gonna to give him some new food. This is going to fix his stomach. And, and the little brother, Buddy, he's like, and, and he's going to be able to fly? Yes, buddy. And, and he's going to be fast like Superman? Yes, buddy. And so Buddy was like, man, that's his source to be strong, to be fast, to get well. Fast forward it two to three weeks later, the dog was still losing weight. The dog was getting even sicker. And so um, I, I was staying the night that night, three weeks later. And uh, at night, I had to get some water, and I heard crunching. I was like, man, yes, he's eating it. I go in there, and I see Buddy, and he's eating the dog food. And I'm like, Buddy, no. And he's like, what? I'm going to be strong. And I'm like, okay, put some milk in it. And so, no, but he recognized that there is a source to be stronger. And so we as Christians, we as leaders, we have that source. We have that source in Christ. We have that source in God. We have the source in his book to help us to move forward, to help others, to help ourselves, to be a better community. I'm not gonna ask you to eat dog food like Buddy but I am asking you, are you going to the source? Are you building your life based off of the, the word of God? And are you allowing people in your life that's gonna call you higher? And are you a part of that community that's calling people to be higher? Community is, is, is really important. Proverbs eleven fourteen says, for lack of guidance, a nation falls, but victory is won through many advisors. Come on, leaders. Leaders say amen. Come on, leaders say amen. Yes, we are called high to be leaders. And I'll close it out with this, point four. Allow healing. What does that gotta do with community? Allow healing. See, God will use people around you. He will use their testimony. He will use their experiences to help you through life. And I'm talking about the, the, the experiences where God has taken them out of something and they relied on God and they saw that victory whether it be a small step or a big jump. And God wants to use your testimony. And God wants to use your experiences. But the problem is sometimes, and I love to talk about this with, with people that, you know, talk with me and, and are going through things of, of hurts and pains and, and they've been through things. They've been hurt by people. Stuff has happened to them in the past. And I tell them about these things that I've learned a long time ago and I use a lot about wounds, scabs, and scars. Where are you at in your situation? Let me explain. Wounds you're stuck in a, in a place where you've been hurt. You've been in a community where you've been hurt. Something has happened to you when you were younger and you were hurt, traumatized. There are things that happen that are just unforgettable and you're in the wound phase. You have not forgiven. You have not gone through things for God to help you through this. See, one thing about uh, when Jesus, before he started his ministry, he went 
to that quiet place. He went to the wilderness. And what happened? He was tested. He was tested by the enemy. See, when you're in the wound phase and it starts to scab up, here comes the enemy. Do you remember? No, nah, don't get, don't, don't jump in that community. We don't, no, don't do that. Do you remember what happened to you? There you go, peeling off that scab. Feeling that pain all over again. The enemy wants you stuck by yourself, alone. Because he knows that in community, there comes healing. In community, there comes growth through correction, through love. In community, there is love. Community. It's so important to God, so it's important to this church that we live in community. And see what happens when you allow God to come in to your wounds. It'll scab up. You'll still feel the pain. You'll still feel the pain. But when you jump from scabs to scars, that is healing. And there's always a reminder of what God brought you out of. So God wants to get you to a place today where you're scarred up. Now you can use your testimony because now you've healed. Now you can help somebody else in their healing by your experiences. Look what God did. Every testimony here today should point to God's testimony. And that testimony is that I brought Jesus onto this earth to die for your sins because you couldn't do it. Every testimony should lead to God's testimony. If everybody can stand up this morning. I just want to help you this morning. Did this help anybody? Or am I just talking? Yeah. Good deal. I'm telling you, we, if we can get to a place of healing and a place where we're trusting a community again, a godly community to help us, to remind us that our marriage is going to be okay, that remind us that, you know what? There's restoration in families to pray for your enemies. Ooh. Ooh. That was a hard one. This morning with all eyes closed and heads bowed, I want to give you an opportunity this morning that you know this morning you need more community. God, I need a divine relationship. If that's you this morning, can you lift up your hands? Yes, 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 yes. And if you're here today and you're saying, you're, you're aware, God, I am hurt. I am hurt and I'm struggling. I'm stuck in the wound phase. I've let it scab up a little bit, but then I call back on my hurt. If you're sitting here today, if you're standing here today and you want God to help you with the healing process, if you want people in your life that's gonna point you how to heal, if you're gonna lean more on Jesus today for healing, if that's you, can you lift your hands, please? Yes, 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 yes. Amen, amen. Well, Father God, we thank you for this people, Father God, today. We thank you that they are so bold to raise their hand, Father God, and be aware of where they're at in their lives right now, Father God, that they need community, but they need healing and they need you. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for sending Jesus. We ask for divine relationships, Father God, and for us to be ready spiritually to receive, Father God. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, yes. If I can still have you close your eyes and bow your heads real quick. 
I don't want to leave without doing this. If you're here today because somebody drug you here and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life and you want to be a part of this community, can you lift up your hand today? Yes. All right, well, let's pray this together. Father God, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for sending him to the cross to die for my sins. I accept Jesus into my life. I receive him as my savior. And today I'm new and I'm heaven ready. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's give those people a shout. Awesome. As we jump into this worship, just allow God to move in you and to speak into you of where from here now. Where from here. All right? Love you guys.